So I got like 15 minutes, so it's going to be a little sprint. <laughs> a few things before I start. Uh, so I'm Abdu, I'm, I've been, I'm Egyptian, I've been here for a year and a half. Wow. Uh, excited. Uh, you guys seem warm already. Um, second thing, um, as I'm performing, just to let me know I'm doing well, and as per tradition, let me hear that snapping. After I'm done, you can clap, but then get snappity snapping. All right. <laughs> So, third thing is that before I start, and this is related to my first poem, I just like to remember and remind everyone that our lives are intrinsically political, and while some people can afford and have the luxury not to engage in that politicization, that politicization really drowns some other people. So I'd like to kind of stand in a moment of solidarity for all those struggling in Palestine, Syria, Kurdistan, Iraq, to the women of the world, to the non-binary, trans, non-conforming peoples trying to be heard, and all those who struggle still remains unknown. Okay. Yes. My first poem is about precisely this, and it's called False Equivalence. In a false equivalence, born and raised, there are those who live and those for whom uncertainty is not a phase. In a false equivalence, you let your humanity rot. Humans are equal, but their passports are by all means not. In a false equivalence, the nations are united, but one sits on top. A few get to veto, all the rest serve as prop. In a false equivalence, the color of your skin not only determines your race, but the intentions that lay within. I remember once an officer at a random search, every scar, scar on my body had a history, and the history was now his. His setback was gentle, his racism subtle. For I am a paying customer, after all, of the flying white packed shuttle. I must not pl fly at once, I may be a threat. You come from a country of interest, he says, as the policy has been set. You've been deemed a little unequivalent, others othered as your features seem a little different. But this is assuringly as bad as it will ever get. Feeling threatened, yet I'm the danger, months spent, yet still a stranger, and being the danger, I now sense the little white mask telling the little white lie. Some lives do matter more, but for some others, the, br the blood never runs dry. Some bodies weigh more, for they have been, been burdened to suffer and sentenced not to cry. Some identities constructed in struggle, struggle are condemned collectively and bulldozed to their fall. The harmony of your equivalence is deeply disturbed by a stench of a memory, the subtle fracturing to my soul. The equivalence is as false as it is rude. Religion is only dangerous where the oil is most crude. <laughs> and as a, Robert, as a black Robert Frost would have once said, two neighborhoods diverged in a jungle of concrete, and I had no choice on which one to choose. One prosperous, predestined to thrive, while the other predestined to snooze. On being a man. Words on words on words will I ever learn and will my wings ever heal. Flame eats flame, it's all the same, and being the male I am, I'm required not to feel. So here it is, an executive order, effective today, I am no longer a man. Call me a lover, an educator, a friend, an innovator, but not a male I demand, for you see, the word man has more baggage than those who lust life can stand. So here's to the man-ups and the hand-me-downs, the toughen-ups and the drag-me-downs, the push-ups and the unmanned frowns. I'd like to leave the testosterone and no longer be a man. I'd like to once and for all end my contribution to a constitution of the hyper, a manifestation of the extra, initiate a little universe where boys can be other things than boys. I'd like to start a mini-revolution, tell you I'm heartbroken, tell you I'm brown, vulnerable, but no longer wanting to be token. Tell you I'm angry, filled with fury, the double work and half pay seems a little unconventional, an unfair jury. I want to denounce the hyper-masculine, embrace the brown. I want to take down walls and, as Leila said, build my own town. Word, uh, words on words on words will I ever learn and will my wings ever heal. Flame eats flame, it's all the same as I denounce the male I am and teach myself how to heal. home, and that is Cairo to me. 
Do you hear the melody? Do you hear the melody of a city that keeps humming but never sings? The soundtrack of a city whose first name is literally Slay. But who does it slay? The soundtrack of a city of the center loud, but what does it really say? Do you hear that? It's the melody of a city that keeps humming but never sings. The soundtrack of a city whose first name is literally Slay, but who does it slay? The soundtrack of a city of the center loud, but what does it really say? A city that taketh unconditionally and giveth in its own twisted way. A city where man is man by night, poor by day, fight or flight, might on might, be homeless, sad, oppressed, thieving, but never gay. Oh, what sweet melody of the saddest dance where revolt and its counter are born by chance. Oh, what sweet melody sings songs about freedom but only audible post curtain calls tells tales of a glorious past. Only audible post curtain calls. Oh, what sweet irony of a city that ceases to dance. Mm. This one is really fresh. I wrote it for here. <laughs> it's still on pen and paper. Uh, and it's about being asked to gently exist. They ask for my gentle presence, but of that I have none. They ask for it as, all, as if all has been said and done. My conforming is loud, my singing disturbs, my accents around your desolation with sound. I'm flying too high, spicing my words, striding with grace, skipping your grounds. Unamused, you ask again, but this time you say, exist quietly or perish. Quiet, you say? Your, your equation is swayed, what you imported, dear sir, is not a figure of clay. Incompetent, I say, tolerant to your slow death, I add, patience for your inquisition I had, for a violent connection to my roots, I'm glad. You say again, but this time filled with fury. Assimilate now, or forever be outlawed. Outlawed, you insist? I recite to you a forefather message in, uh, inscribed on my fist. Your laws visited their lands, but never out. And when they came to flee, they were not allowed. Instead, they were asked to assimilate. So here's a toast to those who will never assimilate, but who will start the fire and watch quietly as your freeze turns into flame. Destroy your, sk your skyscrapers and, ex and expose to you the graves you built underneath. Then place a flower for each of those murdered, for they too were sentenced to a lifetime of silence.